Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here. Welcome back to Car Audio Fabrication. I'm currently working on a Jeep Grand Cherokee and I'm installing three different amplifiers. They're gonna be tucked away in the rear cargo area behind the panel of the vehicle. Now, if you guys are new here, here on this channel, I like to teach you how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. We're currently in the installation phase of this project, but if you've seen some of my other projects, you know that I like to do a lot of custom fabrication and make everything look good with beauty panels as well and that will be coming on this project too. In this video build log, I've already built my custom amplifier rack that holds the three amplifiers, but I'm also adding a digital signal processor that will allow me to completely tune this system. I need to figure out a way to get this guy to mount in front of those amplifiers. I did also run into some major issues in this part of the project that I wanna show you guys. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's hop on in and get started. I think I've settled on having the DM810 in this location here as the final mounting location. I've actually went back and forth in and out of the vehicle multiple different times, kind of test fitting everything in order to come up with this. And the reason I like this particular location is I think I'm gonna be able to still have access to all of these settings. I'll have access to all these settings along with these screws so I can tighten the wires down. And if I really need to, I think I'm gonna build this in a way that I can detach it and just kind of have it sitting off to the side, even though it's still connected with all the RCA wires and then install it in position last by tightening down the mounting positions that will be attached to this. Overall, this is a pretty tight space. I know that it's gonna be a challenge to wire, but luckily we only have to do the wiring once and then I'll be happy with everything being nice and stealthy and tucked away. One of the biggest things I've always had trouble with when doing these projects is kind of knowing where to start. Like it's hard to not want to plan 10 steps ahead and kind of just get caught up in your head and be like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. My best tip of advice I can give you guys for doing custom fabrication is just do the next step that you know you have to do. Like right now, I know that I'm gonna need a flat mounting plate for this to bolt to. I know that I want it to stick out a little bit slightly so that I can secure some of this wiring to it with zip ties if need be. So that's easy enough. Let's get started with making that piece.
And with that, we have our little DSP rack built. You can see this will obviously mount right up here on top of it like so. And just in case you guys didn't catch it, what I was doing there is I was adding some rounded edges to all of the sides that could potentially be touched. That way you don't really scratch yourself on these. I even rounded the edges of these vertical standoffs here. This just gives everything a nice clean look. You also notice when I build something like this, I temporarily stick it together with CA glue. This stuff is super duper strong, but I also like to use a mechanical fastener as well, just to make sure that everything is going to be tied together nice. And once I add in those holes for mounting this, I'm actually going to add some permanent screws from above in those locations as well. Let's see how this looks in the vehicle. This will mount in position right here. It'll bolt in with a couple of different fasteners and obviously the DSP will sit on top of this where I'm touching. To mount the DSP, I'll be using these. These are threaded inserts. I'll put a link for these down in the video description for you guys. I like to keep all different sizes on hand. In this case, I'm gonna be using these guys. These are 832s. Got the DSP rack bolted in place here, but I did run into a problem that I wanted to show you guys. Now, I knew that I had enough clearance for my power wires here. They sit high enough on this terminal that it's not gonna be a clearance issue. I can get both wires in there just fine, but I am going to have an issue with the RCA wires having enough clearance over this lower piece of plastic. I knew it was gonna be tight, but the way it sits right now, it's just not really quite possible to get that lower RCA plugged in. I tried it, but no big deal. What I can actually do, I'm gonna remove this, and I'm just gonna take off a little bit of plastic in this location here. Oh, the joys of custom fabrication. Have you guys ever ran into something like this in the middle of a project? It can be pretty frustrating, but you just gotta think through it and figure out what you can do to fix it. What I did here is I attached three different pieces of wood using template tape, and then on the router, I carefully removed a little bit of a material at a time before I actually rode the router bit bearing against those new pieces of wood attached on top. Only on the final pass did the bearing actually touch these pieces of wood and just remove a slight amount of material, which limited how much pressure was really pushing on these pieces of wood because there wasn't a whole lot of surface area to actually attach with that template tape. But overall, this worked well. I just need to sand it to clean it up a little bit, but we should be good to have clearance for those RCAs now. Got it back in position now, and you can see we have that nice amount of clearance thanks to our new cutout. I need to get this mounted, and I wanna talk a little bit about the air clearance for the base amplifier, and we need to get this installed into the vehicle. But real quick, I wanna say a thank you to our show sponsor, Audio Control. On the Audio Control DSPs and their amplifiers that have a DSP built in, they have this little port right here called the option port. In that option port, we can install this guy right here, the Audio Control AC. BT24. This allows us to stream a high resolution signal over Bluetooth wirelessly to our device and it has aptX HD technology. This also features dual Bluetooth which allows us to not only stream to it but we can also connect to it and control the DSP wirelessly with an Apple or Android mobile device. This just released. If you guys want to learn more details about it you can check it out down in the video description. Let's get back in to mounting this DSP. I also want to talk about that base amp in a second, but let's get this lined up here over our threaded inserts and then we'll attach our fasteners. There it is, we've got it mounted. Now I wanted to talk about this base amplifier here. You can see that we have plenty of space around this, 
especially near the cooling fins up here in order to allow for proper air ventilation and cooling. Now these amplifiers are designed really well. The thermal management is great, so they really don't get that hot to the touch anyhow, but better safe than sorry. This will help keep us cool. Now there is one little thing I noticed here. This isn't a big deal, but it's just kind of something because I'm a perfectionist, I want to fix it. So I'm actually going to make it so that this lower profile matches the profile here instead of having this little corner sticking out. So that's why I protected with the tape here because I'm going to take it over to the router and trim this off. Here it is my friends, everything is now bolted down in place. Now I have to tell you guys, I'm really excited with the way this is looking because as you know, my slogan is design, build, and install. And I think this really satisfies the design aspect of the build. Everything is designed to actually sit behind this panel nice and tight. Everything fits really well. Everything's laid out in a way that I can access all of the different settings. I can even access these settings here once I take off this cover. So things are going good. Now there is some space down there that I think I'm going to do all my wire distribution with the different fuses. There's a lot of wiring that I need to do since there's so many different devices here. And that's what's going to be coming in the next video. So if you have ever wondered about all the wiring behind an advanced installation with multiple amplifiers and a digital signal processor, how the signal comes in, where we attach all the speakers, how all the power wires are connected, you're definitely going to want to stick around and catch that next video. If you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. That way you won't miss that future video and you can check out some of my past videos here on screen. A special thanks to Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping support the making of these videos. Learn more about that down below. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.